Ah, the flatbed scanner, an important tool these days for, of course, photographers, digital artists, lawyers, anybody using documents. But it isn't often used by itself to create art. Usually it's used to scan existing art in. Well, today, that's going to change. Digital photographer and author of Photoshop Elements Tool Solutions and the new Shooting Digital, Nicole Oland, Thank is you. here. Nice to be uh, here so we got Photoshop Elements too. Do we have a picture of Shooting Digital? Because that's your newest one. Yeah, I know. I love that, but we don't have that book. It's up on the website. Oh, I got to bring my copy in so we can get a shot of that. It's a great forward in that uh, book. Somebody who wrote the forward just really know. I love that book because it really talks about using a camera in, in great, interesting ways. Thank you. And really, that's all a scanner is. It's a camera. It can be. All you have to shift your mind a little bit from, you know, like you were saying, uh, documents and two-dimensional objects, right. and to say I can put other things on there right. too. There's a practical side. You can actually do things like jewelry or coins, things you want to document for insurance purposes, right. or even for eBay for that matter. Sure. Uh, well, but, this is you couldn't get then, a better picture of a, uh, of a necklace yeah, with a camera. That beautiful. looks great. It's so simple. The scanner makes it so easy. When you do this with a camera, you have to set up copy stands, use macro lenses. I shoot this kind of stuff, and I always get my own shadow in the picture. Yeah. But with the Look scanner, it's all done for you. Right. So you just place the object on the scanner. Um, placement is, is fairly important. You may need to remove the top of the uh, of the scanner, which I've done here. Uh, in which case, if I if you do that, you'll you need a background, a, won't you? You need a background, and I use a black ah, background. See, that's the, why it looks so good. You didn't. If you use a, a white trick. background, you wouldn't have looked nearly as good. No, yeah. and you can actually use different color backgrounds, but it's not so important because in Photoshop Elements or some imaging it. software, All you right. can change the background color itself. So anyway, does it work better with a 2D uh, object, kind of something, something somewhat flat? Uh, you know, I've done coins, I've done fish. <laughs> now, there's a, there's a precedent for this. I, yeah. In the early days of photography, yeah. Man Ray did something similar, yes? The great artist photographer Man Ray in the 20s, it was in a dark room, a traditional dark room, yeah. and he probably accidentally at some point slapped something, maybe it was a, for that matter, it could have been a coin or a feather or a leaf or a flower, onto a piece of photographic paper, right. developed it, and got this beautiful ghostly image right. that became known as a ray as a ray scanogram. Rayogram. No, rayogram. Rayogram. And uh, and and now we've coined a new phrase. This is going to be a scanogram. These are scanograms oh, in honor of, of the great artist Man Ray. Okay. And they're they're quite popular. A lot of people do this and make art. Can uh, you not do only it? practical purposes? Well, this, this so this is practical for like uh, an eBay shop. Very practical. Let's or do just something. Let's this do something else. Pearl pearl yeah. uh, necklace or for so insurance. You're right. You know, yeah. Document the the object. Right. So any I, scanner I could do this. This isn't a special kind of no, scanner. Any flatbed. You do, okay. don't use a sheep bed. No, no flatten it. <laughs> um, anyway, so so I take a second to get the object uh, in in the right position right. because uh, frankly, the object placement does make a big difference. There's some in the composition. In Just here. a little composition. I use a. In this case, if it's a light object, I use a black piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I put it over there like that, and then command the. Uh, let's just do a quick preview, and uh, are see there what any we got. settings you might want to try with the scanner? Can, uh, it's set for color photo. Is that kind yeah, of what you would want you to know, do? Or? Leo, that's a great question. There, I find over and over and over again the auto settings really work pretty it well. It chooses the best. But most scanners will also give you uh, options. So right. you can go in and tweak it a little bit. Right. You can tweak the exposure. Right. I always say scan at the maximum resolution because okay. you want to get as much as you can. Much detail. So yeah. once, you've, once you've done that, you scan it and uh, it takes a few seconds. But again, if this was something that you were going to be doing with a, a digital camera, you have all the setup and the teardown and easier. blah, blah, blah. This is, is, there, is there any drawback? Is it more contrasty? Is it more flattened? Is there any? Well, the nature of a scanner is you don't have much depth of field. That's and right. So you're, it, you will Where find... Where is depth of field? Define that. Well, depth of field, a lens itself will give you a, f a focus area, depending on the aperture, of anywhere from you know a very tight focus area, maybe half an inch or an inch, to several feet. So it, there's a shallow depth of field or a very deep a, depth of field. And the, the scanner only gives you the shallow. Okay. In other words, everything's out of focus except stuff that's in this kind of plane. Uh, pretty here. much. Okay. Yeah, you can go a little bit beyond. So that's just why the, a flatter object works better than a. Yeah, but you'd be surprised what you could. Uh, well, let's throw see some more. That, that, yeah. That's great. Anyway, I love so that. So then, then once you've done with that, you can throw that into. Uh, into Photoshop Elements, remove right, the background, right. add another background. Hand me that fish. Let's get. I'm wondering here. what this fish is for. Yeah. All right. Just get, uh, I'm not going to give you the fish. I'm going to give you the thing I the fish is. Whoa! Yeah. Don't worry. I dropped my lemon. That's okay. Now Can we're you, at, we're on the food channel now, right? Okay. Here's a lemon. <laughs> That's a real fish. Now the reason I'm putting this on glass is because I don't want to uh, ruin your uh, your scanner, scanner. top. Yeah. And in fact, this is a good time to point out when I do other things like wet tea leaves. 
which makes wonderful, beautiful art, by the way. I can oh, show you some of those images. I'd There's some on the web. But I put them in a, in a little baggie like that to protect Does the Does the baggie surface. become invisible and you just see the leaves? Actually, a little bit, but it actually has a nice effect, too. Okay. All right. So I'm just this is, put I gather the, the kind of thing you just play with it and, you, and to see what happens. You can have a great time. Put anything yeah. you want on there. People put their own uh, body parts on there, I too. I know that. That's very popular at the Tech TV uh, uh, offices, <laughs> yes. Now, I'm, I'm kind of doing now this. Now, you didn't uh, cover it. You're just going to leave it there I'm like that. I'm going to try this without covering it. See what we get. Um, Sometimes that works really well. If you go to the website, the sardines I did there, I didn't cover. There we Here's go. where the shallow depth of field helps you because it doesn't see anything beyond a certain point. And it becomes black. You can kind of tell, but well, I think that's, that's really beautiful. I think that's the edge of the, the glass itself is kind of smeared. That is really but this beautiful. Could be, uh, clearly, this is a piece of art. You know, that's you gorgeous. You can make beautiful things with it. You I, couldn't take a picture that beautiful, really. Leo, I want to show I mean, you. There it is. <laughs> I got to show you one little trick here that I okay. just recently learned is that you can actually make a, a light box that actually will help in getting edge detail and evenness of lighting. Okay. So I use just this little film box okay. here, and I place this over the top of this coin, for example, and then when it scans, as you know, the light reflects off the, the inside of this white box, so it's creating like a soft box effect. Let's see what that looks and, like. Well, it, it takes a gonna... second to set it all oh, up okay. and do it. And I, I just want to point that out, that people, if they're having trouble getting edge detail, and for other effects, you can use a shoebox, anything with a if, light if, inside. If we go here to our desktop, we have some images, right? Uh, yeah. Do you have an image? There is the light. So that was done with a light box, uh, this one? This was done with, and also just adding a, a simple uh, uh, drop you, shadow. You added a drop shadow in Photoshop. Yeah. Now, here's the, the tea leaves I was talking about uh, over here. If I can get that to come up. You can see, you can oh see the plastic goodness. bag. But that's an amazing isn't effect. That, isn't that beautiful? It's a, you wouldn't know where that was done on a scanner. You could also use these for textures, for backgrounds, for, for your own artwork as well. I mean, it could be a starting point yeah. as well the, as the The idea end. here is this, this lowly little scanner, which sits on most people's desktop and costs hardly anything nowadays, really can be this quite be. a creative tool. This should be your next book. <laughs> scanner Mickle Owen Scanograms. If you want to learn more about Scanograms, just head to our website. We've got some great images there, too. Yeah. TechTV.com slash call for help. Mickle, beautiful. I love that.